Hey guys, how's it going? So we are out and about today. We are in Boise uh, picking up some arborvitas. In fact, I think you saw these arborvitas our last shopping trip. Right. Yeah. They had a, here at Far West. That's where we're at right now. Oh, I think I still see them, Aaron. They had these giant spring grove arborvitas or the largest we've ever seen for sale. Uh, but it was, uh, was it close to Christmas? Yeah, I just didn't want to uh, like winter them over, I guess, because yeah. we're pretty close to being able to plant them at this point. Oh, I love seeing all the winter interest in here though, all the evergreens. I see one right there. Oh, Are these? Yeah, looks like it. No. No? Oh. Western red cedar. But look, look in here. Oh my goodness. Primrose, there's ranunculus over there. No, these are anemones. Those are beautiful. Ranunculus right here. And hyacinths, daffodils, a bunch of pansies. Oh, they're so pretty, so pretty. What are these back here though? These look like berry plants. Oh, well, that's because they are. There's some raspberries right here, how fun. You need any raspberries? No, oh, I'm flush, starts. I'm flush, yeah. Ooh, I like this though, this is a pretty color. Look at that dianthus. Oh, I like this evergreen. What are these? Oriental spruce, that's gorgeous. Both of them are. Also, it's interesting because we got up early this morning. Um, it, there was supposed to be heavy fog and ice on the roads and there was none of that, which was nice, uh, but it was just very clear at home. No snow on the ground and it snowed all day yesterday, but it all melted off. But over here, they actually have a little layer of snow still. I got Jordan to help us locate where they're all at. Oh, okay, it looks like that's one yeah. right there. All right, Aaron and Jordan are working on gathering up all of the arbs that he wanted, but I want to comb through these plants a little bit more. The Iberus and Ajuga, beautiful. Oh, I love this. The Leptinella, Platts Black. Is this a sun lover? Yeah, sun to shade. I love that. Oh, lots of beautiful things. There's some thyme over here. Creeping thyme, woolly thyme, elfin. This is a beautiful one. Look at the weeping pussy willow. Isn't that pretty? Forsythias in bloom. Oh my goodness gracious. These are just so cheerful and bright. I love these. This is cool. Scotch Heather Ling, 18 to 20, hardy to negative 20. This is my favorite spot because <laughs> this is a heater right here. Oh, it feels good. But look at these winter greens. Isn't that pretty? Knicknick, I love this plant. So this one, height six inches, spreads out 36 inches. Clearly it's an evergreen. Prefers acidic, low nutrient soil. Well, I could probably guarantee it's some low nutrient soil, but acidic soil, I cannot. You know, the other thing that I could look for, because I'm seeing some white Proven Winners cans out there, I need two to three more of the Limelight Prime hydrangeas to finish that hedge at the end of the South Garden Loop. So I'm gonna see if they have any. See, there's a little bit of snow out. Oh, these forsythias are just about ready to burst into bloom. Those already have a bit. There's Limelights. Limelight, little lime, little lime. Limelight Prime, right here. I'm gonna grab a cart. Perfect. Oh, look at that giant horse. Oh, I love this too. Look at the roof, a little roof garden. There's crocus coming up. Just so leave these parked out here. Yeah, look at that spring grove. Isn't that beautiful? It's huge. Oh. I found three. Cool, nice. Oh. Well, just one, two. Okay. Yeah. <gasps> Whoa, look at that ponytail palm. That's massive. I always wonder where people put these plants, plants that are that big. Oh, and we just planted one of these, the Cebu Blue Pothos. This one's on a pole, it's beautiful. Well, we are gonna go grab the truck so that we can get the plants loaded up. And that was a very successful, very quick trip. Aaron, you found how many? I, I found five spring groves, big ones, and then three uh, pretty large North Pole Arborvitas. Nice. We have a lot of area lot to cover. Of, so. A lot of real estate to cover. And I'm going to sit in the warm truck with my warm coffee. Oh my gosh, these are so pretty. I love this. I love this. Oh my goodness, there they are.
So this is where our little road is going to be. Oh, look. We have a truck parked back yeah. here. Very nice. So this will all be gravel back here. What, did you just drive over? I, <laughs> I felt that. I don't know. And this is where the trees are going to live for just a little bit. Aaron ran over something. <laughs> Popped a tire. Did you hear that? Yeah. Did you hear it? Yeah. <laughs> it's something. It would have to be like a nail or a piece of so, nail. Yeah. This is the culprit right here. Surprise oh, that nobody's run over it yet. Honestly. Oh my goodness. Well, let's see what the tire looks like now. <laughs> oh my. Well, it looks like we're going to be here for a bit. Well, there you go. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a huge piece of rebar. Do you see the tire now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the tire pressure in the truck was like... <laughs> <laughs> Bummer. So you can see our little pile of plants back here. And that's where these are going to go just because they're close to water, a water source for right now. Uh, we're not quite ready to put them in the ground because Aaron has been working on tilling up uh, a section of the new property that we got uh, just recently and he's got to do a little bit more tilling. So anyway, getting the trees here uh, is so, so nice. And once they're out of the truck, I'll show you what they look like. But this afternoon, we are going to finish off our project by gathering up all the ivy I have left over in the greenhouse. We're going to take it down to the garden center and my mom and I are going to make a bunch of topiaries for them to sell down there. Oh, feels good in here. So you can see all these ivy right here, which, you know, I could use them in a project, but I don't really have anything big in mind and I don't want them to just sit here and languish in their little containers right here. And you know, we recently made some of these super sweet ivy topiaries utilizing a wire coat hanger. Uh, container and one of this was just one ivy plant right here. So I asked my mom if she wanted to try to make, I think I've got 23 ivy, if she wanted to make 23 ivies with me and then she could just have them if she wanted to. So anyway, we're gonna load all these up and head down to the garden center in a minute, but I think they're unloading the trees right now. I kinda wanna stay in here. Okay, well here they are. You can see the North Poles right here. I think you've got three of those. Yeah, those look so good and then five of the spring grove, which all look like this one right here. So we have talked about these quite extensively in the past, but the spring groves get a little bit bigger. So 25 to 30 feet tall, 12 to 15 feet wide. And you can see they have a much more open sort of growth habit. They smell so good. Mm. And then the North Poles, three to five feet wide and 10 to 15 feet tall right here so they stay much more tight and narrow in fact you know where we have the raised beds back here with the paris espalier we're taking that espalier out and we are continuing on with our north pole arb hedge right along here to meet up about with our where our neighbors is right there so this will all be evergreen okay so now let's gather up those ivy and head down to the garden center Okay, we're ready to roll. We are. Yeah, so we're here in the greenhouse. It smells good. It smells like dirt. It does. I love it. It's not <laughs> soil, it's dirt. It is. It's so dirt. Yes. And there's a bunch of roses already potted up in here, and they're just in here for a couple of weeks while they root in and get ready to go outside. And there will be David Austin's here really soon. Yeah, filling up these tables. Yeah, so, ready. oh, they should be I here in a day or two. Like today, tomorrow. Oh, nice. Yeah. I think we've got everything we need. Here's all the ivy from home and my hangers from home. I think I got 20 and we've got 23 plants. So we might have to figure something else out for the other three. Okay. And then we've got our bamboo stakes, which we use as a support, which we'll show you in a second, and a couple pair of falcos. And we've got some really fun pots to use. We're going to start with these four blue ones. And then we're gonna probably bring out some terracotta and some other color ones. 
and some potting soil. So I did this project recently, like in the last two weeks, I think, uh, and I explained the whole process of how it's done, but we'll do the first couple a little bit slow and then we'll speed up all the rest of them and then we'll leave them all out here until we're all done. So we can show you like a, a grand tour. Do you think we'll be able to tell ours apart? No. <laughs> it's crazy when we do something creative, even though I'm right-handed and she's left-handed, yeah. oftentimes they turn out exactly the same. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, let's get set up for the first couple. Okay, so we've got our containers full of fresh potting mix here. So we're gonna plant the ivies first. What is that? Is that a slug? Mm -hmm. Ooh, smash it. That came out of my greenhouse. <laughs> Need to bait in there, I guess. So you do want to make sure you bump the center of the plant slightly forward or slightly backward because you want the form to be centered in your container, which we will add in a second. Okay, there. Mine came out in like two sections, two root balls. Oh, that was it? weird. Oh. Yeah, get it in there tight. Ugh. So after you have your ivy planted, you want to separate it kind of in equal, two equal parts. One going off one side of the pot and the other going off the other side. We'll probably have to split up a little bit wider <laughs> as we go along here. That one looks great. It does. Okay, now we make our form. So we've got our hanger here. We pull it like this and then we do our best to form it into a circle. It doesn't have to be perfect because the ivy will cover it. You can shape them into hearts too. We do some heart, heart topiaries before. Do you have any? No. Oh. See? I need, I need to, oh yeah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That looks great. Now we take our hook and we straighten it out. Kind of. So it looks like a balloon. Or a bubble. This is Okay, now we, could totally make bubbles. we could. This is when we need a piece of our bamboo stake and I'm just lining it up with the side of the pot here like this. And we don't want it very much higher, like half inch or so. Yours, mine's a little bit taller, it looks like. So then you take the wire that you straightened out and your bamboo stake and you twist this around. This is the most tough part, I think. Mm -hmm. But once you get the hang of it, it really isn't was isn't too bad. Need some pliers. Nah. <laughs> there. Like that. There it goes. And then we stick it down in the pot. At this point you can kind of manipulate the wire form. Look at that. So now all you do is you take each individual stem of ivy, which this can be a little tender process because you want to pull them apart gently, and you just start weaving it around your form. Just gently doesn't hurt the plant at all. Might need to groom a few leaves off too yeah, <laughs> along yeah. the way. And some just naturally fall off. Yeah. But these are such big plants that they create a beautiful form right from the gate. Which, you know, you don't always run across them that, no. that full. In the end, I find I do a lot of fluffing too. Yeah. Like to, leaves yeah, that have, have been pinched in. Okay, that's one side. So let's take, are these yours or mine? I don't want to be wrapping yours up with mine. <laughs> you <imagine? laughs> yes. Ours are, yeah, they'll be all tied together. Yeah. Not easy. It is so easy. I just love it. Okay, this is a thick branch right here. Mm. And I feel like mine needs to be centered, recentered. Mine's too far back. Mm. Okay, I'm going to lift my whole menagerie up and I'm going to move it forward. Also, I want the back to face the right direction here. There, that's, I think that's better. Okay, so we just are top dressing the soil with some rocks so they look nice and finished and tidy. And you'll notice that each one of the topiaries will look different because all these ivies are slightly mm -hmm. different. Like this one was less full than the one that I had. Um, so some will just be thinner for a while until they start pushing new leaves. But now that they've been potted up into larger containers, which these are the perfect size. Mm -hmm. What do you think? These are like eight inch? Yes. Well, so yes. Ish? Mm -hmm. You think ish. they're 10? No. Eight? Eight. Yeah. yeah. So they'll be happy and they'll start to push new growth here really soon. So, oh, it looks so fun. Aren't they pretty? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Also, anytime along the way, 
You can give it a little uh, reshape if you oh. want to, or you can bend it backward, or, yeah. you know, there's a little bit of flex there. And nobody would ever know that that's a hanger. No. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> yeah, I love that. Okay. Yeah. We are going to do this 18 more times <laughs> with all different kinds of containers. Oh, they look so nice. Aren't they fun? <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys, look at all of these beautiful topiaries. It's fun to see them in different colored pots too. Yes. So which three are for your Easter table? These three right here, these right? Three. Yeah. So these will be lined up on mom and dad's yeah. Easster table. Because I'll have a table. Yes, you will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did leave two plants because they were two, I mean, we could have put them together and uh, trained them, which we did on like this one. This is two plants because there was one that had a split right in the center. So I groomed the split part off and it was so little after that, that we were able to use two in a couple of the pots. And there's also two in each one of these taller pots. Um, we're just gonna leave these loose in the display next to all of the topiaries in case somebody wanted to just get the plant. But I think they turned out so pretty. Mom, look what the pressure did here. <laughs> It just oh. like blew the rocks right out. Oh. That hose is strong. I fixed it. So we've got the aged terracotta, this really pretty sagey green, which I think looks nice with the color, like very soft. And then there's the black pots right here. There's the tall slender, what are those called? Rose pots? Rose pots. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. That's a neat shape. And then we've got mom's right here and kind of the smaller, oh, I love that. The black and the green patina. So it is so pretty. Oh. And then another one in a bigger aged terracotta. There's a gray kind of clay and then a, an assortment of blue glazed. Do you have a favorite? Do I have a favorite? Yeah. Probably something in one of these, yeah, like one too. of yours over here. I actually, of all the forms, I love this one. I don't know what it is. This big poof uh -huh. and then just around. I like it's, that. Yeah, shape. it's a pretty shape. And of course, they will all grow and fill in. You know, some of them, like there was a couple over here. There's a couple, you know, with some more scantily leaved areas, but it won't be like that for very long. Oh, 18, 18 topiaries. Yeah. Okay, we are going to move them into the front of the store now, so let's get that done.
right inside the front door, you'll notice the two in those really pretty light green pots fit in beautifully with the little Easter display up here. And then to the right, there's a whole bunch in the blue pots that we worked in. I think there's what, four of those? No, five. And then we turn around this way and right in the front window, all of those in the terracotta pots, which is my favorite. They're gonna be really happy right there. And then the two in the black pots and one in the gray pot right there. And the two extras dangling from the shelves right there. And you guys, that is gonna be it for today. It's been a really full, fun, beautiful day. And I can't even believe, like, I don't know if you can tell, the sun is trying to peek out of the clouds right now, uh, but it got hot in the greenhouse. We had to take coats off. I mean, so different from this morning being over in the Boise area and having a snow floor there to come back home to dry ground and sun shining. I will take it, it's just beautiful. And you can see all the beautiful flowers right behind me. I might have to take a look at those again before I go home. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one.